You have about 150 clients here, hedge funds, asset managers, institutions, central banks, a lot of central bankers, even former politicians here today. How has Citadel Securities grown and evolved? This used to be a company mostly known for equity market making, but very noticeably pushing hard into the world of rates and credit. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sonali. So we're really, really proud of, of the growth of our franchise over the last uh, really eight years. Uh, the focus for us of late has been launching our credit business, which has been uh, phenomenal. We're off to a great start, making a real market impact there. Uh, Elsewhere in fixed income, we're focused on our European rates expansion. We expect to be fully live in Europe across a variety of products by the end of the year. Uh, and also, really, the biggest evolution for us as a franchise has been that deepening of relationships with exactly those clients that you mentioned, where we are now seen as a trusted liquidity provider, source of liquidity for large risk transfers, complex trades, really adding value to our clients in, in the way that they really, really need. You're getting a very intimate place in the marketplace right now, and we're less than 24 hours, as I sit with you today, from that next inflation print, presumably the next big market moment. Yeah. What is your expectation? So it, it's quite interesting because the market had shifted all of its focus and really all of its vol expectations into uh, the payroll reports going forward with an expectation that they would be weak and it would sort of force the, the Fed to be more aggressive than maybe we had initially thought. Now we've seen a quite strong payroll report last week and the, in, the attention now turns to inflation once again where you say well the growth dynamic now looks pretty solid do we have to be concerned about inflation maybe not getting to target how does it change the fed reaction function so for tomorrow we're looking for a print that puts core in the high 20s uh, gets you to an inflation environment around two and a half three percent still well above target uh, and still leaving the fed with a, a dual mandate to manage well so what does that mean in terms of your expectation for how much the fed can cut rates this year yeah so right now we see the market and, and it's repriced materially, uh, but we're still implying 50 basis points of cuts uh, for this year. And I think when we look at it, uh, whether it's the strength of the underlying economy or the stickiness on the inflation front, that feels a bit too high. So I'll go out on a limb and say we only end up seeing 25 basis points of cuts again for the rest of the year. That's a call. And it's interesting. You have seen more folks turn tactically short in the market, as our own Bloomberg's Liz McCormick points out. Do you think that implies that people can be short even further, given where the market is now and what you expect, which is only 25. Yeah, it certainly would have an impact uh, on the very short end of, uh, of the curve. Uh, so there's, there's room to trade this market tactically, and I think that's really going to be the biggest message and biggest dynamic going forward is the economy is in uh, a bit of an inflection point. There are a lot of cross currents, and I think you're going to get an opportunity to trade what we expect to be material volatility going forward. Material volatility, it was incredible. A year ago, when we we sat here, uh, your clients had an incredible range of outlook comes yeah. here for what the short end would look like. What does that look like going into the end of next year? We had Esther George apparently saying you can't even really rule out a hike next year. Yeah. Well, I, I think getting the Fed in, in a position where they would consider hikes is going to be quite difficult. I think what's much more likely is we end up in a world where inflation remains sticky above target and the pace of easing slows down relative to what uh, the market has priced in. But again, I think the opinions are so wide and so varied that we're once again going to see a market that responds aggressively, likely over-responds aggressively to one or two data points, and we're going to get quite a wide range again in, in the front end of the curve.